So from building the shop and all the concrete, we were left with a lot of dirt. So today we are getting rid of all that dirt. The guys just showed up with a dump truck and a skid steer and we're finally gonna be getting rid of all that dirt. So that's gonna be really nice. All right, so this week what we're gonna be doing is obviously we're getting rid of all the dirt here that was accumulated from building the shop. And then also there's a shed back there that I wanna get moved to the back side of the shop. And that's gonna be where we're gonna store all of our normal landscaping, lawnmowers, uh, kids bikes, all that kind of stuff, because I want the shop to be nice and free and clear for any projects or uh, you know video work or anything that I need to do in the future. So anyway, what we're doing is I got to transfer everything that's out of that shed and uh, get it into the shop for now because the guy that needs to move it won't be able to move it if it's full. So we're going to work on that, getting everything taken out on that this week. But for right now, we're just getting everything out of the uh, out of the van. I kind of loaded it up yesterday. And um, yeah, so we're just getting all that cleaned out now. And then I got to go get the, the trailer cleaned out because the goal is to go, is to pull the trailer over there and just put everything in that trailer all at one time and uh, just make one trip over here and we should be good to go. All right, so I gotta head and drop off the scrap equipment from a change out that we did last week. And then we got some trash that we gotta get rid of as well. One thing to, uh, that I struggle with when it comes to trash owning a business is I, I work out of my own, um, my own home, right? I have the shop in the backyard. So having like a dumpster is just not feasible. I don't really uh, trust that those big front loader, um, you know, trash trucks can drive down that driveway and not like go off to the side and like bust up the concrete. So anyway, I don't really, I don't really trust to, to have that at the house. So getting rid of trash is a task. It's, it takes more time than it should. Um, I actually have three trash cans at the house. So that way one of them we use for just our personal and then the other two, you know, we use for work related stuff. So, and a lot of the times that's still not even enough. So I have to find other businesses that I know and I asked for permission to allow me to put their trash in their trash can uh, whenever I have like a bigger job or something. So anyway, it's those little things you don't really think about when you're operating a business out of your home, out of your garage. Um, but it sure would be nice if I had an actual like commercial style shop to where I could have a dumpster. But as of right now, this is what I got to do. Hey, it's cool when you go to the same coffee shop over and over and uh, you get to know the baristas there, they get to know you and they uh, write cool little things on your cup like that. Just puts a smile on your face. Yeah, so one thing to think about when 
owning your own company or at least a small company like this is that you have to really do it all yourself. And that means you have to clean out your own truck, clean out your own trailer, haul off trash, old equipment, all of it. And it just takes a lot of time. So that's something that you really need to take in uh, consideration when you're trying to run your own company, um, at least at the size that I'm at right now. So uh, it's not like a huge deal, but it's just something you need to think about because you got to get yourself prepped and ready for the jobs that are coming. And you want to make sure that, you know, your truck and your trailer and everything is all cleaned out and ready to go. So you just got to make sure you, you allot some time for that um, and not let it get out of hand. That's the biggest thing. And I'm the type of person that I do not like to have a bunch of trash and old equipment and all of that just sitting around the house, sitting around the shop. So like it's super important for me to leave it on the trailer and then take it directly, get it cleaned, drop off the old equipment, whatever it is. Um, and then that way I'm ready for the next job. I never remove it and put it in the shop. Um, so, well, generally speaking, that's what I do. But anyhow, um, I need to run back to the shop, pick up the van because we have a condenser motor that we need to swap out. So we gotta go pick up the motor from Ferguson first and uh, we'll get that swapped out. Uh, medical center? Yes. Oh man, it never fails. Even if you order the parts and they're all paid for ahead of time, Ferguson is the slowest distributor that I have to deal with, at least in my area. It's ridiculous. Ferguson, come on, get it together. So one of the things I like to do when we're swapping out a motor is to make sure the, the data plate, the specs on the old motor match up your new motor before you actually even install it. So that way you know you're gonna be good to go. And of course, I had the wrong motor. I was not the one who originally came out here and diagnosed this. Um, so I didn't even know exactly what I was getting into. But um, anyhow, I'm gonna have to run back to Ferguson now because I called them to verify uh, and they just gave me the wrong motor off the shelf. So anyhow, this is uh, everything matched up except that this is a 825 RPM motor. They gave me a 1075. So obviously we don't want that. We want to have the right amount of airflow across this coil at all times. So unfortunately I'm going to have to pick everything up and go get the new motor. All right, so got the new motor and we are good to go. Get this thing swapped out, get her tested.
All right, so I'm not replacing the run cap on this because uh, we checked it, we verified that it was within spec. So if it's not bad, there's no reason to replace it. Um, everything is wired up, we should be good to go. I'm gonna verify the amp draw on the motor itself, not necessarily what's on the nameplate. I always like to go on the motor. So it's calling for 0.8 amps. Let's get it fired up and see what we got. So, told the customer about the fan blade. Um, unfortunately, they don't even have it in stock, so we're gonna have to come back to do that anyway. This unit is under warranty, so all the parts are covered, just not the labor, um, which we're not gonna charge any more labor for replacing that blade since we're already in that area working. That's kind of the way that I like to do it. If I'm in that area and it's just a quick swap, then I'm not gonna charge the customer for it. <clears throat> um, but, Anyway, we got to get that motor or the uh, the the fan blade swapped. More than likely, that's the, probably the reason why that motor failed to begin with, um, just because of that vibration. It could have just you know worn out the bearings over time. Who knows? But I don't like it vibrating that much. It should be a lot smoother. So I visually inspected that blow. I mean the, um, the the blade. I didn't see any cracks or anything. It seemed like it was nice and solid, but obviously it's just somewhat out of balance so that's why it's vibrating a little bit like that but anyway at least for right now they've got their pump running again and uh, or at least i should say running the way it should so they should be fine until we get back to replace that fan blade but um that's pretty much it guys i just wanted you to come along with me today and uh, check out a few things that we were working on um but we're gonna head back to the shop we're going to see what that dirt mound looks like. Hopefully it's either gone or, or close to it. And uh, we can start getting things moved out of that shed and start doing some organization. So anyway, if you guys liked this video, you got something out of it, you get, find some value in it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And until next time, see you guys later. Woo!